part of our daily lives are the products of Unilever. So any effort from the company will have a wide impact on the way we purchase. So let's get right into the next topic. The next topic is the Unilever Compass, a sustainable business for the people and the planet. And joining us from Unilever, we have Unilever PH Sustainability Lead, Mr. Rondel Torres. Together with Ms. Anna Mangilin, Unilever CMO for Beauty and Wellbeing in Southeast Asia and Country Lead for Beauty and Wellbeing PH. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to share the story of Unilever and our journey as a local and international sustainable business. So starting the story, Unilever started out with a clear pur purpose and it guides us until today. That is to make sustainable living commonplace. This purpose was grounded on the vision that was deeply held by our founder, William Lever from over a hundred years ago. Who is he and how did it all start? William Lever was an entrepreneur living in the 1800s who understood that a business without a real purpose beyond gaining profit will not last. Specifically, he saw that the problem of widespread diseases back in Britain uh, could be solved by affordable and effective branded soap. This soap improved people's health and hygiene, contributed to resilient livelihoods, and ultimately created a sustainable business in Victorian England. So our founder's legacy lives on, and Unilever intends to further build on our centuries-old commitment to responsible business. For us, business is not about putting profits ahead of purpose. Now at Unilever, we believe that it is purpose that drives profits. Fast forward to today, where Unilever is now a global business with a footprint in over 190 countries and with over 400 brands that people all over the world use daily. Now, more recently, we moved to an operating model organized around five business groups, namely beauty and well-being, personal care, home care, nutrition, and ice cream. Each of these uh, business groups hold a portfolio of well-loved, brilliant brands present in nine out of 10 Filipino homes, such as Surf, Dove, Noor, Close Up, and Selecta. Now, bringing it all together, we are harnessing the power of our company, people, and brands to make a lasting impact. We believe that we can use our size and scale for good to make a difference to people and planet. The Unilever Compass, our sustainable, sustainable business strategy, will help us deliver superior performance and drive sustainable and responsible growth. In place are a new set of industry-leading, company-wide sustainability commitments for all our brands. These commitments will tackle the key challenges of our time, such as climate change, packaging and waste, gender equality, human rights, and fair value, including social inclusion and the future of work. Now, let me hand off the rest of the story to our Philippine Head of Beauty and Wellbeing, Anna Manilin, to share what one of our largest brands is doing in the sustainability space. So Beauty and Wellbeing is a pillar of Unilever where we aim to build a portfolio of, that's what it sounds like, beauty and well-being products. Um, because we are beauty and well-being, part of our sustainability ambition is also to anchor our portfolio in what we call positive beauty. So positive beauty is Unilever's vision and strategy, um, wherein we want to do more good. And it's not just about doing less harm, but actively doing more good for our people and our planet. Um, the ambition is to build a global portfolio of brands that are inclusive and care for everyone's skin hair, body types, championing the diversity of beauty and acknowledging that everyone is beautiful in their own way. Um, and also because we are part of Unilever, sustainability is also a big part of our agenda. We are committed to being planet positive, um, even within the portfolio by helping protect and regenerate, for example, 1.5 million hectares of land, forests and oceans by 2030. By 2025, malapit na, it's even closer, any plastic we use in our packaging will be recyclable, reusable, or compostable across every brand worldwide. Um, so part of this sustainability journey um, and positive beauty advocacy, um, 
I wanted to take you through a, a good example that we've always had in Unilever, and it's one of our core brands, especially in our beauty and well-being portfolio. It's called Dove. I hope you've all heard about it or at some point, you know, have been a user of Dove. Um, and I'd like to talk you through why Dove is such a special part of our sustainability agenda. One of my favorite brands in the portfolio of Unilever is Dove, and it's been our core brand for a, a long time. It was launched in 1957, so tagal na, many generations ago, and it started as a beauty bar. Um, even from its beginnings, its values have always been anchored on honesty, authenticity, and doing good for our consumers. Um, Dove is completely committed to creating sustainably and ethically sourced products. That's why our re responsible sourcing policy and sustainable agriculture code, that's a mouthful, means we only work with suppliers who stick to the same high standards that we impose on ourselves. And because sustainability is such a big part of the Dove agenda, we have strong global partnerships anchored on a shared belief for sustainability as well. So we can produce products that have first physically certified ingredients, responsibly sourced fragrances, no plastic microbeads. Actually, there was a time we were using plastic microbeads, but in line with our plastic agenda, we said no more, so we've taken that out of our products. And of course, our certified cruelty-free, so we don't test on animals. And, and I think it's very, very important, um, especially as the world becomes more aware of how we source um, the products that we sell. In terms of how we manufacture Dove as well, we are proud to share that we have achieved 100% renewable electricity, electricity use globally, including the Philippines. So that's a big claim and, we, and, and that's something that we stand by. Our facilities made use of renewable grid electricity to produce the Dove products that we all enjoy today. Now, one of the big important things also um, is about how we package, because as we know, packaging is such a big agenda, especially in our plastics um, agenda. Um, and over the last decade, what we've seen is the impact of mismanaged plastics. So all over the news now, always there have been headlines around um, plastics as an issue. Um, and Unilever takes responsibility for all its packaging and is committed to deliver 100% recyclable, reusable or compostable packaging by 2025. In the Philippines, all Dove bottles are already made of 25% post-consumer recycled plastic. Our sachets have been optimized to deliver the same amount of product while using less plastic. And these packaging innovations are also complemented by a plastic collection effort led by our flagship program, Mrs. Walla Stick, very close to my heart, which is present in over 400 barangays nationwide. So ultimately, plastic waste is a multi-sectoral issue that needs the collaboration of not just Unilever, because we can't do it ourselves, but the collaboration of the private sector, consumers, industry partners, and government. Um, and we all commit to fulfill our role in helping the world transition into a zero waste, that's the ambition, a zero waste circular economy. And finally, let's talk about something super close to my heart, which is responsible marketing and advocacy. So, you know, Dove has always been one of the early adapters in our portfolio of brands that have, in its even very early days, hindi pa uso ang purpose non in advocacy, uh, maybe in the fi last five, ten years. But Dove already started to speak for and stand for an advocacy on real beauty and making sure that beauty is a positive experience of women universally and it's accessible to every, women, every woman, including young women. In the Philippines, so we've had many years where we've spoken about real beauty. I'm hoping some of you have seen the campaigns on real beauty. There was a really popular campaign we did a couple of years to, ago on you know, sketches. Um, but what we realized was when we talked to consumers, you know, our, our reference of beauty and how we feel about ourselves really starts at a very young age. Um, and it is influenced by people around us. And surprisingly, it is the people who are closest to us and who love us the most that sometimes can do a lot of damage to the way that we feel about ourselves and how beauty, beautiful we are. In the Philippines, we, 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 also, we discovered that millions of girls experience name calling in their family from a very early age, and that really impacts their self-confidence and their idea of how beautiful they are as they grow into women. 
Um, with that, I would like to share with you um, a campaign we have. It's called Simply Headlined, Stop the Name Calling. It aims to really to create an advocacy, not just for our girls, but also for family members, you know, giving us an awareness and consciousness of how what we say impacts the people that we love most. And that's our daughters, our sisters, our best friends. So hope you like this. Um, let's play the video. My family called me Taba because of my body appearance. Po. Tawag po sa akin ay kulot salot dahil po sa buhok po po. Tinatawag po ako ng mga relatives ko na puset. Mas maitim daw po ako kaysa sa kanila. Nag-lose weight po ako para masatisfy po yung, yung hinahanap po nila sa akin. Gusto ko rin matry pumuti. Ang sakit po nun sa pakiramdam. Hindi naman po kasi yun kailangan itawag sa akin. May pangalan po ko eh. Nag-overthink po ako sa gabi na bakit ganun yung kulay ko? Bakit niyo ba ako inaasar? Kailangan ba pareho ng kulay na skin? Bakit kailangan ba lahat payat? I am more than my hair. Tama na ang panunukso. Ako si Justin. I'm Gwyneth. Ako po si Helena. I'm Amaris. Ako si Ayesa. So here in Beauty and Wellbeing, and here in Unilever, we always ask ourselves, can business really change things for the better? Do brands have the power to make a positive difference to people's lives? And at Unilever, we fully believe and we know that the answer is yes. So thank you, and we hope you enjoyed this session. Thank you very much, Rondell and Anna. But now it is time for some questions. Okay, so in any ESG agenda or environmental social governance, E will always be the low-hanging fruit because it's easier to appreciate the environmental aspect. But when you are talking about the social agenda, has it been difficult for Unilever to push the awareness on like how sustainability has these three tiered foundations of ESG as well? So actually here in Unilever, we don't stop just at the social agenda and the advocacy. What we try to do is also expand our efforts so it, it includes um, real on-the-ground activities that we also partner across um, with different agencies, government, even educators in the school sectors. So we spoke to thousands of people internally, externally, and you know it's a confirmation that we should embed purpose not just in parts of our business, but in everything that we do. In the case of Dove, um, like I mentioned, we have programs directly addressing our commitment of health and well-being. So it starts from the advertising that you saw today. Um, and, you know, we are one of the biggest advertisers and we recognize that power of really getting a, a good and authentic message um, out there to, um, to all our viewers. But we are also, we also have programs. So, for example, we have, we, we have things like the Dove Self-Esteem Project that in the Philippines actually has helped now close to 3 million lives through our pilot efforts, pilot pa lang. Um, but it has been very effective in making sure that we get closer to young people um, and activate their in channels that they frequent. For example, we, we do the self-esteem project in, in uh, features in within Cartoon Network's program, um, partnerships with youth leaders of the Girl Scouts of the Philippines. Um, there is a private organization called Education PH that we partner very closely with um, that also helps bring the self-esteem program into the digital space um, where we know our young viewers are. Um, coming next year, we are poised to reach even more people through our plans to uh, expand um, with the Department of Education, as well as the launch of our very own Dove Super U story and one of the biggest gaming platforms for young people, Roblox. So <laughs> we're where the consumers are. We, we will be where we make the biggest difference. Um, and yes, hoping to reach um, even more lives um, across the different activities that we do um, across our brands.
I know inclusivity is a is a very important aspect of any company social agenda. Do you have programs specifically to address the LGBTQ plus community? And how do you create programs for each grouping? Yeah, so actually in Unilever, we believe that it also starts in our own backyard. So we take pride in building an inclusive, positive workplace that starts with our own offices and employees. So for example, we've introduced a number of industry-led diversity and inclusion programs, um, such as well-being and life stages support that take care of LGBTQI plus needs um, and take that into consideration in areas of our policies like maternity, pater paternity, parental leaves, child care. Um, we've introduced a curiosity, I hope I'm, I'm, I'm getting that correctly, a curiosity module in our Degreed Online. So Degreed Online is an online platform where our employees learn different skills um, and comp competencies that they need uh, as part of our employee programs. So we've in introduced a module in there that helps deepen our knowledge and awareness of the richness um, of the LGBTQ community. Um, we also launched uh, the Unilever Proud Network in 2020. It's a global employee resource group where members of the worldwide Unilever LGBTQ, because we're such a big company, um, members of that of the community and its allies can amplify their voices and society in Unilever. So it's, a, it's an ongoing conversation. It's an ongoing learning process. Um, in no way do I think uh, have we achieved everything that we need to in this space, but we continue to do our best. Um, so it's, that's, that's how it starts off as Unilever. And then the vision is to also extend that into the outside world um, with a vision of something more equitable um, for the world that extends far beyond our factories and offices um, and beyond just a conversation of gender and, and you know, gender uh, expression. We want our entire business to work towards the transformation in society that tackles social inequalities. Um, we launched something called a hashtag, hashtag equity is, where we campaigned for allyship. Um, and I think maybe Ron, Rondell will talk a little bit about allyship um, in his section, um, where we call out that equality, it's not just about equality, but it's really about equity. Um, and what is equity? Equity is recognizing that, you know, each of one of us has a different starting point in our journeys. And I think it's very uh, apt also for these communities. Um, with a different historical and different advantages. And, and what this means is that some adjustments in the way we do things, the way our policies work, um, the advantages that we give, some adjustments may need to be made to make sure that the playing field is, is level and, then, and everyone has the right shoes that fit when they run their race. Um, and that's something that we really push um, as Unilever. And lastly, we also have what we call hashtag unstereotype. So unstereotype efforts that we extend to our consumer facing projects. So talagang our activities um, that, are, that are spearheaded by brands. Um, one example is our close up city hall of love. Nice. Um, created to recognize love in all its forms. Um, it's a platform that allows partners of all faiths, races, genders to create marriage certificates and mint them uh, as NFTs actually in the metaverse. So, you know, quite proud of this and uh, is something that we are pushing with a very well-loved brand close-up. Recycled plastic is more expensive than virgin plastic. So often you are actually taking the hit when you convert to recycled plastic. How does that generate an issue with Unilever's bottom line? And how is the whole global vision of Unilever addressing this particular situation? Right. So I think let's start from what we set out in 2017 and even in 2019 as part of our uh, plastic packaging commitment. Because, um, you know, we are hard at work in delivering on these targets because it also redounds back to um, how well our business will perform. So these goals on plastic. Uh, include achieving 100% recyclable, reusable, compostable packaging. Next is a 50% reduction of virgin plastic use, including an absolute reduction of virgin plastic use of over 100,000 metric tons. 
Next is 25% uh, or more recycled plastic used in our packaging, uh, which was already also mentioned um, by Anna as part of uh, our Dove uh, bottles. And lastly, we plan to help collect and process more plastic packaging than what we sell. And the ambition is we plan to do all of this by 2025. So why are we doing this is, number one, it's the right thing to do. Um, we understand that plastic still has a place in the economy, but it doesn't, has a, it doesn't have a place in our environment. And we have to exert uh, maximum efforts in making sure that uh, there is zero waste that goes to nature. And we live in a waste-free Philippines and a waste-free world um, has the highest ambition. Now, how in fact do we plan to do this? is through our sustainable packaging roadmap. Um, and how we explain it uh, very simply is through using less, better, and no plastics. Uh, as you've seen, again, in the example of Dove, with even optimized sachet packs and bottles made with recycled plastic. So to cut, uh, to, to, very, to simplify it uh, even more, in even more uh, what do we mean by less plastic? It means cutting down on how much plastic we use in the first place through lighter designs. It also means exploring reuse and refill formats, and also shifting towards concentrated products, which use less packaging to begin with. Better plastics, on the other hand, means making sure that the plastic we use is designed to be recycled, and that our products themselves use recyclable plastic packaging. Lastly, no plastics, is really about testing refill stations and new formats to cut out new plastic completely and switching to alternative packaging materials such as paper, glass, or even aluminum. So other examples in, the, uh, in this space of sustainable packaging are Breeze, Domex, Sunlight, and Surf, which have started to roll out new packaging, uh, new bottles uh, made of 100% recycled plastic and recycled material. On a larger scale, we're, we work with other companies and stakeholders to achieve our goals. Because alone, I don't think we can we can do all of this. But together, uh, we can achieve a lot more at scale. Now, through our membership of the Philippine Alliance for Recycling and Material Sustainability, the private sector has gone public with the Zero Waste to Nature Ambition 2030 uh, plan. A declaration of commitment by global and local manufacturers together with, with plastic producers, recyclers, and other members of the waste, set, waste value chain to initiate su and support efforts to reduce, reuse, recover, and recycle plastic waste while adhering to science and while supporting the local waste sector. So why do we do this is again, it's the right thing to do and it impacts our place in society and the society that we intend to uh, impact positively for many years to come. I know you have efforts on promoting refills. How successful has that been? Do you feel like the Philippine market has um, adapted to it? Are, are we more open to the concept of refilling? So I think, I think uh, ourselves and our fellow Filipinos are ready so we know that a lot of Filipino consumers are already transitioning to a zero waste lifestyle to the best of their efforts. Now, if you search shampoo bars, for example, you'll see a spike starting from end of 2017 to present. It's a hint that there's an increasing interest in more eco-friendly products amongst many other individuals. Many retailers are also starting to implement sustainability programs and the interest is only increasing. All these point to a need for more eco-friendly choices uh, for our consumers, but without compromising brands or products. Now, so as a response, Unilever piloted the All Things Hair with the Lily. We launched it with Ayala Malls. In the past, when doing a pilot, we normally play safe and test with small brands. For the refillery, we offered our best-selling brands and went for the most popular malls in the city, in Metro Manila. We try to make the consumer journey as simple and as seamless as possible within what the Food and Drug Administration has allowed us to do for our pilot. The refillery has also acted as a collection point for used bottles and sachets that consumers would want to turn over for upcycling. So what happened? 
The great results from the pilot comprised of a 10x sales uh, achievement of the sales target and three times faster off-peak versus a premium su supermarket. Uh, but the biggest win is on the consumer and media engagement as well as the advocacy, the level of noise and advocacy that it created. The pilot generated massive talkability with 98% positive sentiment from all over. However, because of the overwhelming consumer response and the program's reach, the FDA reached, uh, requested to hold off uh, refilling activities until the administration has been able to determine and roll out new guidelines so that consumers and uh, industry will be well protected. We are still actively engaging uh, with the FDA in this, and you know we are uh, their partners in developing the set guidelines. Oh, this one's interesting. We all know that Filipinos are crazy about beauty pageants, but also I know that Unilever talks about self-esteem and positive beauty how do these things play where does that fit in yeah i think it's a it's a mix right it's it's a journey i think there are moments in beauty pageants that i think we agree are still based on a very legacy based um view of what beauty is for for women um but i think there is also some evolution that are coming through um even in the most traditional type of beauty pageants, right? Um, I feel that more and more uh, contestants or, 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 the, or the ladies who participate in them are being asked to be more substantial than simply just beauty at face value or a, a beautiful body, you know, at, at surface level. So a bit more now weight is being put on things that make her more substantial, like her, 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 her brains, right? The way she thinks, her values. Um, what advocacy she stands for when she faces, um, you know, um, um, the world. And I think especially for those who participate in these contests, these for them are also expressions for themselves of what they find to be beautiful um, and what makes them confident. We also have a bit more progress that comes through in the different types of beauty pageants now. You know, there are those that, you know, are, are participated in by the LGBTQ communities as well. Um, and they are very, you know, uh, the, the impact also to those who view them are, are also quite positive um, because it does give them, give, give a, a different kind of inclusive platform where we speak out for for differentiated beauty um, and, and, uh, and a real acceptance that there are different types of beauty that are not necessarily um, determined by gender, right? Or even, you know, how, how one views a standard of beauty to be. So I think it's not a very direct answer. I think it's a journey. It's, it's both yes and no. Parts of it are still very traditional. But there are very good moments that are, you know, try to make these contests substantial um, and positive in the way they advocate for, for beauty in society. So I think building on the, the great answer that uh, Anna has shared with us, um, I also wanted to uh, send a shout out of appreciation for all our beauty pageant um, teams, contestants, participants, because they've undertaken the journey of evolving with the times. Um, they have embraced um, self-esteem, confidence in a positive way. And I think this is something that is being um, lived up to by our winners in the Philippines as well as globally. So I think uh, as with everybody, they're taking the journey to step forward, to go onwards, to go forwards. And I think uh, if anything, the, that is the great thing about um, encouraging people towards positive beauty. And uh, we hope to do more with all of our partners in the space. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rondell and Anna. I'm sure our viewers will get to appreciate more of the products from Unilever, knowing its sustainability effort. But before we proceed to our next topic, do not forget that we have a raffle at the end of this afternoon session. So you get a chance to win 3,000 pesos worth of dining credits to Rossi Pizza, which is located at the City of Dreams in Paranaque City. And to know more about this, to know how you can join the raffle, make sure to click on the link that our Manila Bulletin Sustainability staff will be posting down there at the comment section.